Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Do you hear me? All good? Perfect. Thank you so much for being here. I have to say, this is the most beautiful room I ever spoken spoken into, and it's incredible. I'm, I'm stoked. I feel like a rock star. <laughs> this is really, really good. And this is a fantastic work camp. This is my first time at work camp OC, and I already love it. Uh, so thank you for coming to my talk. I know there's a super busy schedule, so I'm particularly uh, happy that you picked my talk. So what are we going to talk today? We're going to talk about securing WordPress without coding skills. Is there anyone here a security expert? Don't stay here. <laughs> or if I say something completely wrong, please say it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So my name is Francesca. Uh, as you can hear from my accent, I'm obviously not from around here. <laughs> I'm from Torino, Italy. Uh, I own more than one t-shirt, <laughs> but it's very convenient to have um, like a, an outfit like Steve Jobs that people will recognize it. So <laughs> in my case, it's a blue shirt with pink glasses. Wherever you go to a work camp, you'll find me wearing this thing so you'll know who I am. Uh, as Steven say, I'm the WordPress Community Manager at SiteGround, the international web hosting company. And before doing that, I was a freelancer making websites for other freelancers mostly. So giving back to the WordPress community is basically my job. It's part of my job description. And I'm going to brag because I, I worked hard to get here, right? So uh, I like bragging. I'm not a modest person. <laughs> so, what I love is that having this job allows me to do the thing that I love the most in life, which is the sharing knowledge. In Italian, we say when you have money that you need to enjoy it because you cannot use it to, and I don't know the word in English, but you will not put it in your coffin, right? All right, so you do the same with knowledge, just share it. It's the most wonderful thing in the world, and I think word games are amazing because each one is a story to tell. Each one of us has something to give to the other person in the room. So this is why I love going to word camps around the world and uh, sharing my experience, sometimes my failures, <laughs> sometimes my successes and what I learned from it, and sometimes I get to share things that I learned from my colleagues at SiteGround. So this talk, it's actually a bit of a mix of everything uh, from my previous life as a website owner and designer, developer, plugin installer, and, uh, and my experience now uh, with a big hosting company behind it. So I'm obviously not a security expert, but I think that so becoming a security expert is a different job than making websites, okay? It's a very different job than making websites. But I think as web professional of any kind, we owe it to ourselves and our customers to make the web safer for everyone. Because everyone has to get something for out of it. If the web is safer, it's safer for everyone. And also, if you knew if you know enough, it will prevent you from making costly mistakes, which is what this talk is based about. <laughs> it's my mistake and how I solved it and how much it costed. So we will not talk about technical stuff. What is your name? Josh. If you have any technical question, Josh is your man <laughs> and he's here. <laughs> if you have technical questions about anything related to SiteGround, come look for me. And after this, we're going to ping my colleagues that know about security <laughs> and technical stuff. So if you have any really technical stuff, Josh is your man, or you come see me, and we're going to ping customer support, and they're going to reply. But today, so well, I like to think of myself as a common sense dispenser. I'm like really like full of common sense. That's my, my superpower, I think. Um, and I learned this, as I said, uh, from my experiences, and I hope it's going to be helpful for you too if you don't want to become security experts, but you want to make the web safer for everyone. So 
how I learned this. During my time as a freelance web designer, there was one particular accident that led me to research security a little bit more. Uh, and the key word here is awareness. Again, it's not becoming a security expert, but know enough not to be dangerous, let's say, <laughs> like this. Uh, so one of the websites that I managed, this ChipUB that was mentioned, so ChipUB is a multi-author uh, website. We're now over 80 people writing for it. So imagine 80 people having access to it, creating their own username and their own password. And so at some point, this website got hacked. I suspect because someone had as a password 1234. I cannot prove that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so the website got hacked, and we got a cease and desist letter from an American lawyer that asked us to remove false advertisement that was redirecting to a well-known pharmaceutical product. And we're like, what? We're a bunch of ladies reinventing our career and writing about it. You know, like we talk about marketing and personal branding and sometimes cool pajamas to work from home with? What are you talking about? And then we scanned the website and we realized that content was added to our pages as hidden content with advertisement for a pharmaceutical product. Needless to say, we were very scared because, you know, we're in Italy. Suddenly we get a, a season disease letter from an American lawyer like, oh, are we going to go to jail? <laughs> are they going to revoke my visa? I don't know. It was kind of scary. So we managed to get rid of that. And uh, um, obviously we had no idea our website was compromised. And we also got a sense of false security because we installed a plugin at the time, not even a plugin, actually a module of a plugin that was supposed to keep uh, intruders out. So we're like, we have a plugin, we're safe. No, unfortunately, that's not how it works. This is like the most used sentence ever when we talk about security that says that security is a process and not a plugin. So even if you installed a security plugin, which obviously will help, there are things that you need to do that are your responsibility and that will help immensely. And I learned this, as I said, firsthand because I thought, all right, we have a plugin, we're good to go. No, that's not how it works. So security is a process, security is a state of mind, and it starts even before you create your website, I would say. You have to get into this security mindset. Safety, I would like to say, even, you know, it's not just about security, it's about safety, uh, even before you start your website. So, and this is where Josh is gonna help me. Um, let's do a bit of a background, very easy. We're not gonna get into technical stuff, as I said. Who is doing these attacks, okay? So we talk about attacks, hacking. And if you're anything like me, you imagine those hackers as Neo in the Matrix with the 25 keyboards, 75 screens, typing like that, and going to my website. That's not how it works, <laughs> apparently. I was very disappointed when I realized that. So there are more or less three bodies that carry out attacks. One is Neo from Matrix, or um, Keanu Reeves did another movie where it was an hacker. The Net? I don't know. It's a very old movie. Anyway, so he was there. So when it's a person, those attacks are very rare, and they attack very high visibility targets. Think FBI, <laughs> think, you know, government sites, think banks, think about this, political parties, think about this kind of thing. That hacker will not attack francescamarano.com. He doesn't know I exist. 
<laughs> and he, he is not really interested in my website. So per, human attacks are very rare, are very sophisticated, are probably the hardest to detect because they're sophisticated. And then we have bots. Bots are programs that are written by humans, but they potentially hit lots of websites at the same time with usually one specific thing like, you know, getting your password, going to the, the admin area, whatever. Uh, they're not very sophisticated, but they're very efficient because they can hit a lot of websites at the same time. And even more effective than bots are botnets, which are, as you can imagine, network of bots, which is multiple computers attacking. So imagine large scale attacks, hundreds of thousands of websites, uh, coordinated by a computer that is usually a server that is usually called CNC, control, uh, command and control, and those are deadly because they. They hit hard. They, they go to millions of websites at a time. They're not very smart, but they're deadly because they, they attack a lot of websites at the same time. Now, you have to understand that it's nothing personal, especially if you're francescamarano.com. If you're fbi.com, it is personal. But if you're francescamarano.com, it's not personal. What do hackers want? Because I remember when we, were, when we got hacked, I was like, what do they want from these ladies? Like, we're a bunch of ladies writing useful, free content. Why are they attacking us? They don't care. So what do hackers want from your new website that just you and your mom read? They want to gain control as admins of your website so they can write files and they can gain control to do stuff. What kind of stuff? Malicious stuff. What kind of stuff? For example, sending out spam. Uh, they can write the scripts that will send unwanted spam or viruses through your website. Uh, they could use your website to upload unwanted content. It could be, in our case, it was uh, advertisement. It could be pornography. It could be viruses. It could be even pictures that they don't know where else to put, right? But they will use your website as storage, basically. Or data theft of the most basic kind. If someone sends a comment to your blog, their email is stored inside your website. If you have an e-commerce plugin and someone buys something from you, their email is going to be stored in your website and not even encrypted in the <laughs> database, unfortunately, but like in the, <laughs> in the admin page of WooCommerce or of any comment content or comment plugin, you'll see the full, web, the full email. So they can just basically kind of easily get a database of emails to which they can send spam afterwards. And it's, you know, it's not a very difficult attacked to carry on because sadly people use unsecure passwords and then you get into the website, you scrape all the emails, it's, it's really a matter of seconds. Or they could use it to redirect, they could upload content, uh, they could work as a redirect, so for example your website, your domain still has a good reputation for Google their domain doesn't have a good reputation, so they will use your as a proxy to go through and go to their website. And they can also use this for um, having a higher place in the uh, search engine results. Maybe they don't have like a malicious intent, they didn't add um, any spam or virus, but they're redirecting the traffic, thus having more links, thus climbing the search results. And finally, this is something that I didn't know existed, when I, but when I started researching for this talk, ransomware. Do you know what ransomware is? Except for Josh. <laughs> Does anyone know what ransomware is? Okay. So basically it's digital ransom. They will get into your account, um, 
you will not be able again to get into your account and they will ask for money to release back the password and the account to yourself. Now, this is very popular, and also this I didn't know, on social media. Uh, about a year ago, there was a, ma well, massive, not massive, but there was an attack on uh, Italian influencers on Instagram, about 150 of them, which had very good accounts with over 50,000 followers. They managed to get into their account, and they sent to each one an email that said, uh, give us $4,000 or you don't get your Instagram account back. Now you have to imagine, for example, in this case, it was a lot of ladies that were selling their arts and crafts and they worked hard to get to those 50,000 followers and suddenly you have someone that said, no, give me $4,000. And luckily in Italy, and I guess in every country of the world, there are uh, police um, sectors that deal with that. So they were able in about uh, three days to solve the situation. But this is a thing that happens and I didn't know. And obviously there are effects if your website gets hacked. Reputation. Did you ever visit a website that was marked as hacked or insecure and went back to it? I don't think so. Because once you say, oh, this website is hacked, I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I'm not going to go there anymore. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if the people will clean up this website 30 minutes after you visited. That's it. Their reputation is done. They're hacked. So you won't visit them again unless you really, really want to visit them. Uh, there's a tool by one of the Google tools is a Google Safe Browsing, and they will put a notification that the website is not secure. So again, People will not visit that. Or your website might be blocked by your hosting provider, by your internet provider, or by the antivirus software you have on your computer. How many times did you get the pop-up that said, this website is not secure? And you will not go there. It doesn't matter if they sort it out. And let's not forget about cost. So when our website was hacked, um, none of us had any idea how to remove the things. And at the time we were with a teeny tiny hosting in Italy that wasn't really ready for this kind of things. So we had to pay someone to clean up our website and the website was down for, well, in that specific case, that website doesn't uh, make any revenue. So we didn't lose revenue, but still that website was down for over two days and not great and we also had to pay someone to to take care of it so it could be also you know there's a cost for cleaning this up now I think no one can guarantee you that your website will not be attacked ever and that your website is a hundred percent safe am I right Josh when I say this okay <laughs> uh, because I know that a, a lot of companies use you know, uh, super secure servers and stuff like that. And it is true. Obviously, both hosting companies and uh, uh, servers or anything will put in place all the measures they have to make it secure, but there is no such thing as 100% secure. What we can do, and it starts honestly from your computer right now, we can try to reduce uh, the chances of being attacked. And it starts with the simplest and most overlooked measure <laughs> that you have <laughs> to secure your website and your computer. Use a secure password. It means use a long password. How long? 25 characters. Panic. No one remembers 25 characters. I hardly remember my son's birthday. So. <laughs> This is why <laughs> the internet gave us password managers, <laughs> which are fantastic pieces of software that will allow you to put all your logins inside an app, and you will need to remember just one, the master password to go inside the app itself. Now beware, m make your research before you pick the password manager, because one very popular one was ACT, 
hacked. So it gave out millions of passwords. Now, I know that one password has never been hacked. So my personal um, uh, preference is for one password. It's called one password, look it up. It works for Mac, phones, Android, whatever. And it's not super expensive. I think it's about $50 a year and it's effective. They changed the UI, I don't really like it, but I'd like to complain when UI changes, so maybe it's just me. Don't reuse passwords. That's another thing that we all do because we're lazy and we cannot, again, remember one, you know, <laughs> too many passwords, so we reuse the same password. Why you shouldn't? These bots carry on these automated attacks, right? So they find out, they attack thousands of services, online services at the same time. So they find out that that specific email with that specific password that were managed to figure out for Gmail, as soon as they figure out that, they will check other thousands of online services to see if you use the same combination of password and email for other services. So you thought they hacked your Gmail account while in a very short period of time, also your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, bank account, uh, national health security or whatever, it's also hacked. The other thing that I like about 1Password, and it's one thing that I'm doing because I realized that I had 90 over 300 websites using the same password, which is not my son's birthday, to my defense. Uh, but, uh, so what I'm doing now, I'm going through all these uh, services and find new passwords for them instead of using always the same one. The other thing that one password, and I imagine every password manager does, they also uh, create, they can generate long passwords for you, so you don't have to come up with 25 characters on your own. You just get the, the app to do it and you just copy paste. The other thing that is so easy and so overlooked is keeping it having plugins and themes from trusted sources. Now, if you just started your WordPress website, you probably don't really know what a trusted source is. It's like, you know, for us that we've been in the business for many years, you mention one plugin, I'm like, you're cool. You mention another one, I'm like, you know, so, uh, but this is because we have the experience for that. If you just started, uh, my suggestion would be install things that are inside WordPress.org. And also in that case, you're not 100% secure, but let's say it's a bit better than going to unknown sources. So you go to WordPress.org and you have this. Uh, plugins, themes, or you go inside your WordPress websites and you go to plugins, add new, and then you will have all the plugins that are in the official repo, and the same goes for themes. Now look out for this kind of things. When was the plugin last updated? So WordPress used to be updated about two, three times a year. Then we had a year and a half without updates, and now we're having updates about each two months, I would say. So check when it was at last updated, because now we are at 5.1.1 that was released a few weeks ago. If that plugin that you're using was updated two years ago, I can promise you there's a vulnerability somewhere. <laughs> because in the meantime, we upped the PHP version, we probably changed three versions of WordPress, three major versions of WordPress, and with each of these versions, we usually make also some security patches. So check when it was last updated. The active installations, I would say it's important, but not, I wouldn't base the whole decision on that because we gotta start from somewhere. So good for these people that have five million installs. Can someone guess which plugin that is? Nope. Nope. 
It's Yoast SEO. So, and I took the screenshot this morning. So they have five plus million active installation because obviously they're, they're a big player in the industry. They've been around for years. They're trusted, but there might be some new plugins that they're also very good. As long as you see that the developers are involved with the development process, as long as you see that they update it, as long as you see that they have the minimum requirements and they're involved with the community and they reply to support question, then even if they have 100 installs, give them a try. They just started. Also, Yoast started with one installation. Right now, they have 5 million plus. But if you want to be mega sure and you don't know still the the industry so well stick with something like this uh, it's tested up to 5.1.1 which is the latest release of wordpress uh, you need 4.9 4, 4 to work php is a bit low but by the end of the year it's going to be better and it has good ratings it has five stars but with an incredible amount of uh, reviews this, I forgot to change the slide, so it's in Italian. But it says that um, in the last two months, they had 580 uh, questions in the forum, and they replied and closed 535. So they're active, right? So I would say at the beginning, stick to this uh, WordPress.org things that you have in your uh, repo. The other thing that you have to do is update. Now, when I started working with WordPress, it was about 2008. I remember my mentor, the person that taught me everything about WordPress, was like, don't touch an update before three weeks. I was like, why? <laughs> oh, because there's a number of problems, and they're going to release a security patch, and you're going to get the white screen of death, and all this kind of stuff. This doesn't happen anymore. Updates are absolutely safe to do immediately after they released. And by the way, this is what one of the pillars of hosted, of uh, managed hosting, is that the hosting company will do the uh, update for you, basically not immediately, because obviously it's millions of customers, but within a reasonable amount of time. I'm saying this especially because uh, last year in December, WordPress 5.0 came out. I don't know if you were involved somehow in this thing, but it looked like Armageddon. It was like the moment they hit the release button, millions of websites are going to go belly up, and it's going to ruin and destroy everything. Guess what? It didn't happen. And I am very lucky to work for hosting, I love data, I love numbers, <laughs> so this is like porn for me. You go and see how many websites there are and how many get updated. So the, the thing is, we waited for a few days, just to be sure, and then we started rolling out updates, and guess what? Nothing happened. Just super custom developed website had some problems that were clearly edge cases, Everything else just worked. So I think especially after WordPress 5.0, we should really trust the system and get the updates as soon as they come out. But if you don't have a managed hosting company and you do manual updates, do them just after you do a backup. God, they're so boring. I mean, no one likes to do a backup, right? So, but we, not only you need to do it, make two. I know, you're, you, you're looking like you're in pain. <laughs> I know, I, I empathize, I hate doing backups. So, um, do backups, two, two of them. One with your hosting. It's probably, so again, if you have managed hosting, the hosting will take care of it. But if you still don't have managed hosting, just activate it through the user area and save one copy in your computer, which means that you also have to back up your computer. <laughs> if you're a Mac user, it's pretty straightforward. There is this time machine. Get yourself an external hard drive. They cost basically nothing nowadays and keep the... the the backups. The other thing, 
test the restore <laughs> because sometimes you trust the backup, you have 30 days of backup and when it's time to do the restore, you don't know where to do, where to start, it doesn't work, the internet goes down, I don't know, like, you know, like the scene in Blue Splatters when Carrie Fisher arrives and Jim Belushi starts to say, blah, blah, all the excuses in the world, that's what happens with backups. So please always make two and make sure you, are, you have everything in place. Back up your computer. Use a safe password also for your computer, possibly, because we're, I don't know, where are the word camp? I leave my computer everywhere because I trust this community. No one is ever going to touch my computer. No one is going to steal it. No one is going to look at the content, but guess what? Sometimes it happens. This is, there is a saying also in the security world that says something like, humans are the weakest link. Because you might have put super advanced technical stuff in place to secure yourself, then you go work at Starbucks, you leave your website on a table, you go to the, the bathroom and you don't put your computer on sleep. And then if I'm someone that has malicious intent, I just go and grab everything I need. Or you put your password, again, I did it, on your piece of paper. And then the piece of paper falls next to your computer. Guess what? You're hacked. So uh, take care of all these things. And finally, this is the fifth tip I have for you. So HTTPS doesn't secure your, your website. That's not what HTTPS does. HTTPS secures the communication between your website and the rest of the world. What does it mean? Um, again, I'm not going to go into technical details, but it's a protocol that works both ways. So I ask to see an HTTPS website. The website, yes, hello. The user, the client says, hello. Now we know that we have a secure communication. Now it's safe to put data. Don't ever put any any, any information of any kind on a website that doesn't have that green locket that says secure. Now, two years ago, this was like a fancy thing to have. Today, there is no excuse not to have an SSL certificate on your website. One, Google will penalize you in terms of search uh, results if you have a non-secure website. So if you still use the HTTP protocol. Two, it's free. There's a fantastic body called Let's Encrypt that issues free certificates. A lot of the hosting that are here today support Let's Encrypt. is an open source project. So you don't need to learn how to install an SSL certificate, which is kind of difficult. You just need to press a button most of the time in your website, in your web hosting user area. And the other great thing is that most hosting, SiteGround for sure, but I'm sure other hosting now force HTTPS to every page on the website. Because I don't know if you tried to have HTTPS a few years ago, then suddenly you had four or four pages thing, things that didn't work. But now I, I, I assume that in most of the big host, managed hosting, it's just the press of a button just to force HTTPS everywhere around the website. So honestly, there is no excuse. The other thing that we used to say, we used to hear, is HTTPS will slow down your computer. That's also not true because now, today, most uh, hosting will have on their servers HTTP2, which is the second version of HTTP, which is much faster. HTTP3 also is coming. So don't be afraid that HTTPS will slow down your computer. And again, it's free. We all like free things, so just get us an SSL certificate. I will end by saying that security is a shared responsibility. Now, I don't know if some of you already put in place this kind of measures. Maybe some of you never heard of this. and You might be a bit overwhelmed. Oh, my God, now I have to think about 25 characters to secure my website, and I need to learn what is a SSL certificate. No. Luckily, you're not alone in all of this. There are at least the three stakeholders in the security process. Us, the website owners, we will do everything in our power not to get hacked and to secure the communication with the people that hopefully want to visit our website. Developers that develop themes and plugins pick the right partners because 
if they care about their plugin and themes, they will do whatever they can to make them secure for you. And obviously hosting. So hosting is a partner in all of this because all the hosting companies will take care of security at a machine level. Things that you don't, like how many of you heard the, not Josh, obviously, how many of you heard the word uh, WAF? Okay, three over, I would say, 60, 70 people. I don't know what WAF is, and you don't need to know. I know it because I do that for a living, but you don't need So these are firewall rules that are written at a server level. You need to be a sysadmin to do that. You, you don't need to be a sysadmin. Just pick a hosting that will give you the security that you need. And that's pretty much it for me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Great job. Questions? Got a question back here? I'm coming around. Is it for me or for Josh? OK, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, a few uh, uh, weeks ago, or a month ago, at our WordPress meetup, we had a speaker from WordFence. OK. And she said something that I don't understand or like, okay. which was that using a subdomain is a security risk. Now, I like to use a subdomain for some of my projects. What was the, the argument behind it? I couldn't understand it. Something I cannot about, understand it either. Let's about, ask Josh. <laughs> something about common access from the cPanel. Well, I mean, if you put They're both all... They're HTTPS. If you put all the measures that we talked about also in place for your subdomain, so you have a, a, a long password to access it, you have HTTPS, uh, you know, any of this thing, a subdomain is, is the same thing as a domain. I, don't, I cannot think of a reason why... Ah, if the subdomain, can we get the mic to Josh? So he's going to explain to us why a subdomain so might be not. The only thing I can think of is if the subdomain were to get compromised, it would have access to every site that shares with your primary site. So any site that was connected in the folder structure could potentially be impacted by one of those sites getting uh, compromise. Yeah. So that's a problem also in general with shared hosting. Uh, if so inside the same account there could be something compromised and then the same the other files in the same account could be compromised. One thing that I will uh, suggest you actually to look out on shared hosting is one thing that I never know what it's called but it will come to me. C H root? No. So at least you know that there might be some vulnerabilities inside your account, but if another account is compromised, it will not compromise your account, which is something that was happening back in the days. Back in the days when you had like a hundred it doesn't matter how many accounts you had on a server, two or 25,000, if there was not this protect, it's called, uh, no, but it has something with root. I'll look it up and, uh, and see, ch root. So it's called ch root. And this will prevent different accounts on the same machine to compromise each other. So look out for that. So this yes. is a quick question. Um, in shared hosting, a lot of times you have an opportunity to buy a dedicated IP. Getting a dedicated, and it's just a small amount of add-on. Yeah. Is a dedicated IP do anything to help with no. security at all? Dedicated IP has nothing to do with security. Okay. Dedicated IP is just so you have your IP, uh, and it's dedicated, so if you access the same services or websites or you are at a there, there's a number of reasons why dedicated IP could be a good idea, but security is not one of them. No, no. All right, a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.